All right. Hello, Geometry. Welcome to lesson three of topic one. We are going to talk about midpoint and distance. This is very much a coordinate plane involved section. So let's just recap what the coordinate plane is. So remember, the coordinate plane is made up of two axes, a horizontal one called the x-axis because x goes left and right, and a vertical axis called the y-axis because y goes up and down. Uh, positive x to the left, negative x to the or, Positive x to the right, negative x to the left, positive y up, negative y down. Uh, recall that all points on here come in ordered pairs. The first is the x, the second is the y. So remember, you go left or right first, up and down second to plot a point. So again, in this in this uh, in this section, we're going to use a lot of coordinates to compute things. Um, it's a good blend of algebra and geometry. Okay. All right, good. Okay, so the first main topic we'll talk about is the midpoint and the midpoint formula. So a midpoint of a segment, and I think I talked about it a little bit last uh, section of constructions because we did a lot of bisecting. It's a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So a midpoint essentially does the bisecting as well. So it's a bisector as well. Typically, a bisector is a segment or a line that goes through the midpoint, but same thing. So in this picture here, we have a segment P and a segment Q. Now they have real coordinates, but in general, let's call them X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Again, it's just because P is the first point, it has an X and Y, Q is the second one, has an X and Y. The twos and ones, don't freak out about them. This is how you find the midpoint, this formula. You're going to take the two x's, you're going to add them, divide by two. You're going to take the two y's, add them, divide by two. This is exactly how you find what's called an average. So you need to think of the midpoint as just the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So I want to use these coordinates as an example. All right. So we're going to call P's coordinates x1, y1, Q's coordinates x2, y2. So if I were to use the midpoint formula, I'll do it up here x1 is negative 4. We're going to add that to x2, which is 2. A big mistake is that people would put the negative 3 next. Your x's are not from the same point. You must pull an x from the first point and an x from the second point. Those are your two x's. So be aware of that. You never put the same two numbers from the same point in the parentheses together. Divide that by 2. And then we'll do the y's y1 is negative 3 plus y2 is 1 divided by 2. If you simplify the top, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 divided by 2. Negative 3 plus 1 is also negative 2 divided by 2. And then this is simplified to negative 1, negative 1. And that is exactly the midpoint that they have right there. Now I am going to click. Uh, I'm going to clear this real fast. And I will click on the box here. This should take me to the website where I will log in, hopefully. Uh-oh. Whoops. Don't remember my own stuff. There we go. And it should take me to... Yep. And we can mess around a little bit. So like, let's see. So, so if you look, as we change, as we change these coordinates... So let's go 4, 0. Notice the midpoint changes, right? So now we had a negative 4 and a positive 4. The average of negative 4 and positive 4 is 0. So that's why the x is 0. Uh, you can even do it for just a straight horizontal line, right? Horizontal segment. So uh, 4, 0, negative 2, 0. 1, 0 is right in the middle, right? So again, it's the halfway point. It's the midway point. Um, so yeah, so that's the midpoint formula. Make sure we can do that. All right, so let's take a look at our next uh, slide here. I think we have a midpoint problem to do. Yep, what is the midpoint of segment AB? So here we go. So I am going to let A's coordinates be X1, Y1. I'll let B's coordinates be X2, Y2. We'll use the midpoint formula, which says you're going to add the X's and divide by 2. You're going to add the Y's and divide by 2. It's the average. So x1 is negative 3 plus x2, go to point B, is 4. Divide by 2. y1 is 2, 
from A plus Y2 is negative 2 from point B. Divide by 2. Uh, negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1 divided by 2. 2 plus negative 2. 2 plus a negative 2, that really is just 2 minus 2. And 2 minus 2 is 0, right? A positive 2 and a negative 2 cancel. Divide by 2. So you could answer this uh, in a couple ways. You could leave the 1 half as a 1 half. So 1 half and then 0 as a numerator means the answer is 0. Or you could make this a decimal. So 1 half as a decimal is 0 0.5 comma 0. So either answer works. Now, if you plot that real fast, you'll see I'll do it in blue. At that point, one half zero is right there. That's your midpoint. And again, you're saying that A to M is the same as M to B. Nice. All right, we'll do one more here in this first video. So let's see what it entails. All right, so it says, uh, example, do you partition a segment? What are the coordinates of the point three-fifths of the way from A to B. Hmm, interesting here. Well, if it were a midpoint formula, right, remember that your midpoint would be the one halfway point, or the halfway point, right? But we're doing three fifths. So how are we going to do this? Well, the key here is slope. We're going to talk about slope. Um, now, we're not going to officially call it slope, right? But we're going to talk about the change in x. and the change in y, right? So our change in x from a to b, I'm going to go this way. Let me do it in blue. So my question is, what is that distance? How did the x change? Right? OK. Well, from 3 to 13, from this x to this x, we had to go to the right 10. That is a positive 10. So from A to where B is here, that's a change of positive 10. What we're going to do is we're going to take 3 fifths of that number. 3 fifths of 10. And 3 fifths of 10, again, use a calculator, your brain, whatever. Uh, 10 divided by 5 is 2, and then 3 times 2 is 6. 3 fifths of 10 is 6. We'll also do the change in Y from A to B. And notice I'm starting at A because A was the first point listed. So make sure you start at the first point. So now here, I'm going to continue on from my blue up to where B is. I'm going from a Y value of negative 4 to a Y value of 11. Um, you can also count up 4 and then up 11. That's a change of positive 15 because you're going up 15. Uh, now, notice here that they're counting by twos. Each of these squares is a two. So that's a two, four, six. This is two, four, six. So again, that could be confusing you as I'm counting. So they're counting by twos. I just recognized it. So to find the change in y, we're also going to take three-fifths of 15. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So three-fifths of 15 is 9. And now this is the change that we should count from a to B. So I'll do it in green. We should take our point A, which was at 3, negative 4, and we should apply this rule. We should take the X and we should add 6. We should take the Y and we should add 9. If we do that, we're going to get the 3 fifths waypoint from A to B. So if we use our numbers, 3 plus 6, negative 4, uh, sorry, negative 4 plus 9, That's going to equal 9, 5. So hopefully this point is on our line, and it looks 3 fifths of the way there. So let's graph the point 9, 5. So again, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 2, 4, 5. And there's the point 9, 5. And if you look, right, if you look at this distance compared to that distance, if this is 3, three-fifths of the way, then that must be two-fifths. So this ratio must be a three-to-two ratio if you look at the numerators, and that looks about right. Okay? So there you go. So nine-fifths is your three-fifths the way point. Okay, great. So uh, we'll stop the first video here. Second video is coming up.